In this video, we will be troubleshooting the Digital Integrated Multi-Sensor, or DISM, on the Iponic controller. You see, your DISM is a complex sensor that reads temp, humidity, CO2, and light. So care and responsibility is important to ensure the longevity of this device. Now, if your sensor is reading incorrect values, or it's not reading at all, it's time to take the following steps in resolving this matter at hand. When plugging sensor into the controller initially, make sure the white circles at the point of insertion align at the top. Try unplugging, then plugging back in your sensor, making sure its connectors are seated all the way in and screwed on. For the 624, Try swapping sensor from room 1 to room 2 or vice versa and see if the sensor reading issue follows between rooms. After that, try doing a soft reset by pressing the small button between manual toggle number 2 and number 3 on the back side of the PCB. Inside the controller, at bottom, where the DISM's gray shielded cable comes in, make sure all wires from terminal point are straight. As it enters into the controller to the printed circuit board, within its shielded cable are four wires, black, red, white, and green. Check and inspect how the sensor wires are mounted at the temperature and humidity sensor terminal blocks. For the 614, red goes into negative 1, green to DAT1, white goes to CLK, and black goes to GND. For the 624, you will have two reds in negative 1. One green in DAT2 for room 2, one green in DAT1 for room 1, CLK will have two white wires, GND will have two black wires. Now, when placing your sensor in your grow room, you want to make sure the sensor wire path is free from any type of interference, grow lights, high voltage fans, dehumidifiers, or any type of device that could generate interference with the way the sensor transmits its signaling back and forth to the Iponic controller. Also, the Iponic's max amperage is 15 amps. Excessive amperage draw simultaneously can cause irregular sensor readings as well as excessive heat generated in or around the controller. If your sensor wire is not long enough and you have to extend it, please do not cut the sensor wire and splice back. You not only may experience sensor instability, but you will void the warranty of the sensor module itself. So please, we encourage you to utilize Link 4 sensor extension cables. Also, if you are planning a pesticide saturation or sulfur burns, make sure you cover, bag, and protect both the sensor module as well as the controller if the controller is inside the grow room sealed environment. You also want to keep your controller up to date with the newest firmware versions and make sure your sensors are mapped correctly. Other issues causing sensor irregularities are a marginal power supply not sending adequate DC step down voltage. So you want to meter it at the 12 volt and GND terminal blocks to ensure a 12 volt DC plus feed is in fact going to the control board. And finally, a corrupted configuration as well can cause sensor symptoms, which can be easily resolved by a simple factory restore of the controller itself. In conclusion, most sensor issues can be resolved in the grow room, but if not, please call our support anytime for additional assistance. And that's our video in troubleshooting the DISM, the Iponic Digital Integrated Multisensor.